Good morning, dear students. So today is third uh, December two thousand twenty, and uh, the time is allotted for the BA semester fifth students, students of economics, and uh, the paper which I am dealing is research methods and methodology paper. so student today in the third unit i have to deal with the terminology or methods of research named as positivism and scientific method of research so these two terminologies you have to understand for the purpose of your specific research and in the undergraduate level when you will learn these two terminologies then later on when you will move to the post graduate level or research level then you may apply this type of terminology in the research purpose so students uh let's start the terminologies and make clear that you understand its meaning because at undergraduate level if you understand the meaning of this terminologies this will be better for your future post graduate level courses as well as research purpose so let us start with the positivism students as a philosophy positivism adheres to the view that only factual knowledge gained through observation this is very much important the the line you have to learn understand and remember that positivism adheres to the view that any factual knowledge gain through observation including measurement is trustworthy in positivism studies the role of researcher is limited to data collection and interpretation in an objective way so this is very very specific that you have to be objective you have to be factual and you have to be trustworthy on your measurement this is the philosophy behind positivism and when i will bifurcate these points i may say that in positivism the external world is real and direct observation of behavioral phenomena is required to confirm or refute hypothesis and also students observations must be value free and emotion less interpretations have no place in science so this is very much important in, in positivism when you are believing that this is a uh, this world is real observation must be value free and emotion less there will be no work for emotions in your research when you are conducting the positivism research method and students then we may say the reality is consistent findings are generalizable through this research when you find any conclusion that will be consistent and the findings are you may generalize the findings so this is how you have to define the terminology positivism and then dear students let's also narrates certain characteristics and certain points regarding this terminology i may start by saying that positivism refers to the school of thought that the only true or valid form of knowledge is that that which is scientific the principles and methods of the natural science such as chemistry or physics are used to study human behavior which in itself is objective and tangible in nature 
the researcher can observe human behavior and measure facts and laws or theories of behavior can be developed concepts such as this is very much important you have to understand this that concepts such as feelings emotions beliefs and so on have no place in research as they cannot be directly observed or measured and they are unreliable and they are not constant over time so nowadays in this covid era or in this in the situation prevailing in india we all are moving towards valuation of the senses valuation of the family system quantification of the trusteeship systems etc the nature of research will be prevail on this type of issues because on one hand postism says that there is no uh concept of feelings emotions beliefs in positivism and there is no place in the research area whereas nowadays research areas are open for these fields also so we have to balance when we will proceed towards the new area of research okay so students measurement should be objective in this positivism this approach involves precise measurements which can be controlled or manipulated by the researcher others could see the same evidence for themselves and reach the same conclusions such exact measurement allows statistical analysis which provides an impartial and precise answer careful research designs can show causal relationship for example e x causes y so this is very much important you have to you have to establish the causal relationship between x and y and the researcher has no influence on the findings and has no personal influence on the results so that means this is very factual this believes in facts this is a law of truth okay then students now as earlier i told you about the present day prospective research area let us split these two views that is called a traditional split so quantitative is viewed as the traditional and i told you earlier during the class when i was telling you about the distinguish between quantitative and qualitative research here quantitative is viewed as the traditional the positivistic the experimental that means quantitative is a traditional positivistic approach whereas qualitative is viewed as the construct constructive or naturalistic post positivist or post modern perspective so this is nowadays phenomena that you have to use both qualitative as well as quantitative for the real research work in which there should be there could be valuation of emotions and feelings also so both can be seen as scientific and good research in either remains a systematic and rigorous process so students positivism positivism is a factual research but now we have also splitting this with the traditional research okay so when we talk about the post positivism which i was talking earlier meaning is the interaction of external reality and the internal perception or mediation some thoughts constructs etc can be observed directly but can be in inferred from observational data observations are necessarily influenced by perception and cognition and can therefore never be totally value free okay while many aspects of the physical world may be constant and predictable living beings and random occurrences have an elements of uncertainty that may allow understanding 
but not always allow predictions and control. So this is how, why I was telling that in post-positivism era or post-positivism research method, we have to use quantitative as well as qualitative approach because nowadays there are we have to research as a social scientist on the living beings and living beings are not predictable okay so students when we interpret this we can interpret with the uh, social science or science because now we have to distinguish this topic with the research method uh, with the scientific method and as you see the study of scientific method is the attempt to discern the activities by which that success is achieved among the activities often identified as characteristics of science and systematic observation and experimentation inductive and deductive reasoning and the formation and testing of hypotheses and theories this is how you have to distinguish between positivism and scientific method so we may say that the scientific method is a tool that helps scientists and the rest of us to solve problems and determine answer to question in a logical format. That's why this is a scientific, uh, scientific approach. It provides step by step general directions to help us work through problems. So students, while dealing with the scientific approach, we should know about the certain steps to the scientific method and this is also applicable for any research method. So what is that? First is to identify a problem. This is the first step. You have to, should identify a problem, economic problem, social problem, environmental problem or anything. Then you have to research the problem. Then you have to formulate a hypothesis. Then you have to conduct an experiment or you have to collect the data and then you have to reach towards a conclusion and suggestive measures. So this, there are five steps to scientific methods and I will stop here by explaining this uh, flow diagram that in scientific method first you have to ask question through yourself then do background research then construct hypothesis, then test with an experiment and then analyze results, draw conclusion. These are the five steps I earlier told you. And after this fifth stage, if your hypothesis is true, then you will report and result will be okay. But if hypothesis is false or partially true, then you have to communicate the result and then again you have to think and try again and construct your hypothesis through different way. So this is how the scientific approach moves and this is the difference between positivism and scientific approach. So thank you students and prepare notes accordingly.